Hello ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here and welcome to Foxhole, the massive multiplayer full-on war campaign MMO. It's it's a weird one. So join me today as we take a little tour and I talk about what makes this game unique and why it has seriously grabbed me and a lot of the members of the Armco community. Let's go ahead and get play. Hit play. We're going to log into my uh, my colleague character. Well, I guess you only get one character that you can play as. You get to switch whatever faction you want to play on of the two factions at the beginning of every war. Here are the current casualties for the war. Now, the way this works is you've got two major factions fighting against each other. So it's two teams. You've got thousands of players playing. Literally, it's like 6 a.m. right now. And last I saw online logged in with something like, yeah, it's over a thousand people at uh, 6.30 in the morning, East Coast time. So this is the, the most inactive, I think, portion of the day. So we've got a colony, or the casualties for the Colonials. This is the faction that I have joined up. The Colonials, 478,000 lost. While the Wardens, those blueberries to the north, 488,000 so far during this war. And the war has only been going on for, what are they up to? Eight days. Eight days and like 10 hours. In game, it says days at war, 209. That's how many, every day in game, there's a day and night cycle is an hour long, so 209 hours so far. Well, let's go ahead and deploy as the Colonials. Now, I'll probably release this video a probably a few days after I've recorded it. That way, I don't give away any intelligence that is key to the war effort because it is a huge group of players working together, putting their time, effort, and resources into winning the war. So I'm at the where you start spotting as soon as you get into the game. If you decide to play this, you're going to end up in the tutorial zone. If I hit M, I can look at my map. This is just the like, learn how to play the game mode. If you jump in, this is what you're going to see, and you'll see your faction. Both factions do look different. Um, the Colonials have a very World War II American allied vibe to them. I think mainly it's the M1 helmets and the backpack, the very um, English-looking backpack straps and whatnot. Yeah, I, I really love the style of this, but they do have as the game has developed, completely different uh, visuals from the actual infantry and how they look to the gear and equipment. And we'll get into that a bit more as we as we dive in. But let's go ahead and hit the deployment zone. If you do jump into this, um, there are a range of different areas that you can run up to and train in, basically learn the basics. Now you can do this, but I recommend uh, watching a few YouTube videos that are out there, they're really useful for getting you into this. This does work, and if you want to get like hands-on, like how to drive vehicles in the driving course, or if you want to try getting in some range training on the artillery, over here in this section is where it's at, and they've even got targets out there. God, the artillery system is quite cool. You actually get your azimuth, you get your distance, you have a spotter, you do the math, and by do the math, I mean use the website to do the calculation for you, and now you're starting to land rounds on targets, make it up for wind and everything. Anyways, let's move around. Move around is WASD. Um, we're going to hit up the deployment zone right over here. We're going to hit E, and we can choose where to go. Now, you're going to see uh, this map. These are all the regions that you can spawn in. Um, the ones that are blinking are ones that are contested right now. There is an active front right now. There are, there, there are tanks, half-tracks, jeeps. You've got artillery raining down, heavy machine guns, mortar fire. That's what's happening up there. It's probably pure chaos in almost every one of these, or at least it'll seem like it when you get in. But the more you play, the more you realize, at least with the other outfits, the other regiments, there's a plan. People are working together. Uh, and it looks like we're not doing half bad. We actually managed to take all of God's crops and we're pushing in to the weathered expanse and the northern portion of the endless shore. And not too long ago, just a few days ago, uh, Armco, as well as a few other regiments, managed to take the evil eye. We fought tooth and nail, and the wardens put up such a, such a desperate defense, but we actually managed to catch this entire island chain. We had owned the uh, the eastern front, and we had managed to push through while allies pushed up north, woodblind. We actually managed to push across the bridge. We met up in the Tuatha watch post. <laughs> Got him, got him, got him, got him. Oh no, I'm suppressed. Damn it. Bit lost. There's like five of them on the AA gun. Shark, uh, we have a, a mission. Roger that. Give me a few moments, I'm heading your direction with all required, but. I'm holding the line. 
I'm at a forward point. Got a machine gun, a bunker. Machine gun tools. Oh, 50 grenades just got delivered. Love it. Lodgy, you're doing great. You're doing great. We're holding. Uh, oh, man. Taking too while to watch post was a pain. There's a building right around, uh, I think it's like right here. It's a, a, a single indestructible like civilian structure. It's just a uh, like a farmhouse. And it ended up being this, this key battle zone. Anyway, let's go ahead and get spawned. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a variety of different ways to play this game and why I think it's awesome. So we're going to head over to the Shackled Chasm. Uh, it is a backline hex. Each one of those hexes, by the way, are servers. I'll open it up again. Now, there are two versions of the map. This is secure map mode. you got to have your opsec. I don't want to give away where our bases of operation are or anything like that. Uh, and you probably notice in the bottom right-hand corner there might be something covering up my chat. Or better yet, I probably can just minimize it. There we go. And, and I will try to keep that on the lockdown actually i'll switch it over to squad chat since i'm not in a squad right now but welcome welcome to the shackled uh chasm where we're gonna set up so this is a town hall this is like the center of the city where you can spawn you can grab gear and equipment uh right now this is all stuff here's the cool thing about this this is all stuff that was made by players right this is supplies if this city was going to be attacked right somehow they managed to make it all the way back to our backline logistical base which would be a shock um, then we'd be grabbing up ammunition and resources, radios, RPGs, grenades, smoke grenades, gas masks, you name it. Um, they're in here. I'm going to grab a pair of binoculars. Um, I'm actually going to avoid grabbing a radio so that I don't open my map. Um, what the radio does is it actually updates your map with in current intelligence. You're getting radio, um, information on where enemy positions are. You're getting information on where allies are, where the defenses are set up. Uh, what we'll also do is I will grab an SMG. No, let's grab an LMG. Mm. No, we're going to do a logic run, logistic run. So let's go ahead and grab a pitch gun. This is our SMG. There are different weapons. Even the gear and equipment that you use has now been updated as of, you know, the development of the title to be different for each faction. So, like, the ward in assault rifle is a three-round burst and ours is not. We get an SMG that fits into basically our secondary spot, which is a little weird. Uh, but quite cool. So you'll see that actually takes up my secondary spot. If I hit tab, by the way, this is my inventory screen. I got a hammer in there. You start with a pistol. We get a 45 and uh, a couple magazines or an 8 millimeter. Excuse me, 8 millimeter. Uh, it looks like a 45 to me. But uh, you know, we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and get rid of those, and we'll grab we'll grab the LMG as well because I want to show you guys something. I want to show you how the combat actually works and the difference between a couple of the weapons. We'll grab one magazine. I hope the other. Uh, <laughs> colleagues will forgive me. Colonials will forgive me for wasting a little bit of ammunition. Let's go... Uh, well, we'll get to that in just a second. Let me switch over to the SMG real quick. So, one, two. These are your one spot, your two spot. So, one spot, I'll put my, um, my LMG in there. My two spot, we'll put my binoculars in there for right now. And then the ammunition for both weapons. Now, I wouldn't say this is a good kit. This is just for, uh, the benefit of an example. I got my binoculars out. I can right-click. I can look around the city you can hear that truck in the distance that's because this is a lodgy base though it is early in the morning uh there's probably not going to be a ton of activity and by a ton i mean you know there, there are afternoons this road particularly it gets uh it gets pretty insane right so let me zoom in here what we're gonna do is we're gonna head south so this is the oh let me make sure i'm off the road i will get run over those uh lodgy drivers don't slow down for nobody uh so let me open this up birds chirping uh down south we've got a garage down here we can go and see what vehicles that can be made on the current research all the players are working together and choosing what research they want using the engineering centers which is quite cool uh but basically this works like an rts there's a reason for this kind of pseudo isometric view this top-down perspective it's because the game emphasizes not the twitched based first person shooter skills of another game that's kind of similar to this like maybe world war ii online or you know uh there aren't very many games like this. I guess EVE could kind of be considered a game like this because it has a logistical element, but it's hard to feel like you matter in EVE unless you're one of the uh, one of the old-time players that's been around with that huge stockpile of ships. But we've got a variety of different icons on the map. This is a scrapyard. If you've ever wanted to be a harvester from Command & Conquer Red Alert, 
uh, then this is going to be your favorite job in the world. You can literally drive a harvester around and collect resources. Uh, you know, you're Tiberian. You can get your gold mine from Command and Conquer. Um, you you research, re, uh, grab the resources out of here, load them up in a truck, which I think one just went by. Yeah, you can see the trail right here, the track of a, of a, of a half track that just drove by. And drop them off. Um, you drop them off at the refinery, which we're going to run up to. So let's go ahead and run up here. Uh, we'll actually take the ladder. It's a little bit faster. I've been in this town quite a bit, doing a lot of logistical whatnot. Ah, the birds chirping. I'm drinking my coffee. It's a good day in the colonial... Uh, are we an empire? I actually don't know what the lore is. I think I need to dive into the lore a little bit. There's a garage. There's one of our logistical trucks. I'm not going to drive off with this because I don't know if somebody is using it right now. There's a couple of them here. There's even a bicycle right there. This is a garage. This is where you make your vehicles. All kinds of vehicles. Um, I actually prefer, so far, infantry combat. I think find the vehicles are... They're fun diversion, but for me, it, on the ground with the rest of the squad, that's kind of the funnest thing in the world. Chucking grenades, firing RPGs um, is actually a blast. But I found that every person that I've talked to has better, you know, different elements that they really enjoy. Parking, free trucks, a literally logistical place where people would drop off trucks so you can grab them and use them. Um, this was a sign posted by someone. Now remember, every piece of equipment that you're going to see in this, I'd say 99% of the equipment in the game is made by players. We're running over to the refinery night now. There's the factory where ammunition and weapons and all kinds of gear are made. Run over here. Please don't run me over. And if we wait here for about, I don't know, less than a minute, I guarantee you a truck's going to come by here and drop off resources that's being driven by a player. There are no NPCs. This entire war is run by the the player economy here. There you go. It's Elon Musk. <laughs> I love it. It's a running gag that Elon Musk plays this game because I have run into him every single time. I'm going to salute him or wave at him. There we go. Eight. I can salute him. So he's using one of the half tracks, um, a yeah, flatbed half track to move crates of goods. So he's moving a lot of resources. He's using the crane to move them in. There are other ways to unload stuff. You can actually just drive up those, um, this guy right here, this guy with the with a, um, with a covered, uh, I guess he's going, there's one of the harvesters right there. So yeah, resources are moving through. He's going to refine these. If I run up to this, you'll actually probably see some of the resources that I've got. I can use it. You can see the, uh, uh, some of the resources. Oh no, no, I don't have any refined in here. I actually emptied it out last uh last night so he's got the truck ready to go emptied out uh but i you grab all the scrap here's the scrap icon and then you choose what you want to refine it into explosive materials fuel for the front line or keeping these vehicles moving all of these are burning diesel by the way or your b mats your basic materials they look like big old i beams i'm gonna grab a little bit of these i'm just doing this to give you guys an example of like if you understand the basics of where the kit comes from it makes the combat seem so much more interesting now that I've grabbed up 40 B mats, um, notice I'm 103% of my inventory weight because I'm carrying a freaking LMG on my backpack. And obviously, you would never do this as just an infantryman. You'd use the gear and equipment that you've got. Please don't run me over. Let me run across. There are voice comms that are local based on the distance to target. And then you've got squad comms. All that stuff is built into the game. It's questionable quality. Um, some people seem sound okay we, we still use team speak we still use discord for like you know coordinating things a little bit better but uh it's it's fine um and i found that the collie side because i haven't played the wardens yet the collie side and i don't know if i ever will honestly i kind of really love this faction um super friendly all right let's get into the factory i'm gonna dump these 40 b mats in here what can i make with 40 b mats is there anything that i can make with 40 i think i can make what like a like a med bag, maybe some bandages. No, I can make literally nothing. I'd need 60 to make. Uh, yeah, 60 to make. Yeah, meh. Nope. Can't, can I make a sledge? No, I can't even make a sledge. A sledgehammer's 200 B mats. Damn it. <laughs> That's why you use a uh, uh, a truck. I can move, you know, a thousand B mats easily in a truck. Uh, but you can see rifles, shotgun ammo, uh, SMGs like the one that we picked up. That's 80 basic materials right there. Of course, this is an, an open bin right here. Anybody can grab these. These are crates of materials, 7.92, probably heading to the front line. If I open my tactical map right now, and I'm not going to do it, I've decided not to. I don't want to give anything away when we're going to release this. But there will be little pins on the map saying, hey, uh, let's say 
what you know uh over here in westgate they're getting nailed by the bridge maybe they probably are this is probably a battle that's going on for sanctuary right now and for the gallows i wouldn't be shocked this has been one of the highest casualty areas this area over near um, fisherman's row has been constant brutal fighting uh the boys have been fighting over there i salute you um, this is not a battleground I have joined yet on this front. I've been over on the uh, the northern and the western front. Or, excuse me, the eastern front. Uh, but anyways, the say there's a pin. They're like, we're out of 7.92, or we're almost out of ammunition of this kind or that kind. Then you're going to get people like this guy, um, Fomix, who is loading up, and it looks like ammunition, or somebody's making ammo, loading it up, and then driving it out to the front line as quickly as he can to drop it off at their forward operating bases or maybe their town center, wherever the front line is currently at, keeping them supplied. How cool is that? Now, I hope that gives you guys, a, if you're if you're interested in this kind of, like, having a, a concept of why you're fighting, not just another round in a battlefront game or battlefield game, but an actual, like, hey, I'm trying to take this territory. These bullets mean something. Uh, that's what Fox Souls really sold on it. it. Every time you die, you respawn and you use up soldier supplies. These shirts, they take 80 of those B mats. So you've got respawns. They've got, it's like bringing new troops, fresh troops to the front line. All right. Anyways, let's get into We're going to go out to this farm area. And we're going to pull out the LMG. And I'll go ahead and reload it. I've crouched so you can stand, crouch, if I walk over to the corner here, you can go prone. And all of this, when I right click, you'll see a line come out. Uh, that indicates where I can shoot, where I can fire. So uh, it's pretty accurate because I'm laying down. There's the fire. Not bad. Relatively accurate fire. Uh, this is how combat works, right? I can move with the LMG out. I'm a bit slower. But I've got that suppression fire. I can put down tons of rounds. Let's go ahead and get a little bit farther away so we don't freak out the guys over at the refinery. I'm sure they're very curious what's going on. Somebody's got their little private parking area back here, which I find hilarious. Like, what? Why? Why have private parking? Okay. We'll go back here. Uh, let's switch over to that SMG. So the SMG is going to operate a little differently. I one, I can move faster. I'm moving a little bit slow because my weight's high. So let's go ahead and just... I will pick this up before we leave. Um, but I'm going to put it on the ground. So now look how fast I can move. Much more assault. Let me go ahead and reload. I reload faster. Running around, my it's going to be hard to see on YouTube, but my aiming indicator, that bloom that you see, is getting smaller and smaller as I move. SMG allows me to kind of move and be a bit more accurate than, say, that uh, big LMG. Um, and then the bigger machine guns, you can't move unless you've got it propped up on something or you're, you know, you're laying down. So good rate of fire. A little bit of a spread. Uh, if I stop and I stay still, notice the indicator gets smaller and I get more accurate. If I crouch uh, and I say move around, I can turn around really quickly, right? Relatively quickly. If I lay down, my ter my indicator will be as accurate as it's going to get, much faster. If I had, say, like a single shot rifle, it'd be far more accurate. Um, but my rate of fire will be crap. So you're starting to see how the combat works, right? Now, there are elements to this that, that make it a bit more fun as you get farther and farther. Let's go ahead. Let's pick up this LMG. Let's head on over to the front line. Um, and actually, let's take a truck over to the front line and bring some much-needed supplies. And then I'll show you guys some of the combat. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But, man, this game, for the teamwork aspect of it, really has sold me. Is that... Uh, that's a different one. That's Razor Crest dropping off valuable salvage. There's another truck. Always moving. Now, there are other resources as well. It's not just scrap. And you can get really deep into the logistics elements of this. Uh, let's look at where we're at right now. Because I forgot where the town hall is. Because I want to put this stuff back in it. Um, now that I've wasted a few bits of ammo. <laughs> There's a crane right there made by players. Uh, it's got a full base building system. Which I'm sure we'll see when we get to the front line. Um, because those engineers never sleep. Uh, I think they get more done uh, than anyone else in this game other than maybe the salvage crews, the resource gathering crews. Uh, we're going to actually keep the SMG on us. Let's grab another piece of ammo. Um, we're going to go to the front line, so let's grab a gas mask. A gas mask filter. I am going to keep the binoculars on me because we're doing a video, but I normally wouldn't take one with me. Um... 
and I might even leave it in the front line for people who need it. We got our gas mask. Um, they did add gas grenades to the game. They are incredibly deadly. And if you get stuck in one, it'll start burning down the amount of filters that it's got. And then you're going to want to actually didn't grab it. Um, or maybe it just loaded it. Let's grab another filter. So we've got a reload just in case. And we're going to grab some SMG ammo. There's a little bit right there. Grab two mags. Since we are going to get into the fighting. There's some med bags in here. I love the medical system in this. I think it's such a cool concept. Um, if you get shot down... Oh, don't, 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 don't reload. I uh, don't want to reload because it will waste the ammo. Uh, let's go ahead and get to a... Let's go grab one of those trucks. And we will load up with B-mats and we'll head to the front line. These buildings can be fortified and turned into uh, defense points. There's Elon Musk. He's running. I don't know why he's running. All right. Is this truck unlocked for us? Hopefully it is. It is indeed. Is there anything in the back? Here's the inventory. I'm hitting E to get into the inventory of the vehicle. There's nothing in it. Um, and it looks like she's almost out of fuel. So what I'm going to do before we start this diesel up and drive off with it, I'm going to get out. I'm going to get to the driver's seat, hit E. And because we're right next to a fuel truck, I can hit this button right here. This is the only menu for vehicles, and this is one of the things I really love about this. The systems are complex enough to be really interesting, while being really easy to work with. This only has, um, this only has one menu. Refuel diesel. A line runs from the diesel truck, and if we get back in, top left-hand corner of the screen, the diesel, uh, tank is filling up. We're gonna be good to go shortly. We're gonna have to get some salvage. So what I'm gonna do is open up my map and see where I can go. Now the salvage field here is empty. Notice there are a number of salvage fields. There is one that is ready to go up in the north. There's also a salvage mine that's got some salvage ready to go. Four, and there's a component mine there. Uh, let's hit up the salvage field so we can look at how resource gathering works. There's one of our, there's one of our guys. Hey, man. Yeah, I'm finishing up my evening right now. Uh, I have not slept yet, and I decided to do some spur of the moment tech running. Oh, oh man, what are you doing? I just woke up having a coffee, doing a little quick like uh, recording, talking about the uh, the game, what I think about it. How'd last night's op go? Uh, we didn't actually do one. We uh, did a logistics day. Uh, the Warden Weekend Offensive is going to start in probably around, well, either 12 hours or 24 hours. So, uh, uh also because we unlocked, like, light tanks about two hours ago, uh, I wanted to get some, uh, stuff ready for that. And we are, uh, if you want to get on that, uh, light tanks, uh, require rare mat materials to build, and then the ammunition for them requires, uh, explosive materials. Not the heavy ones, just the regular ones. Okay, fair enough. So explosive materials and the advanced mats seem to be priority then. Yeah, uh, uh, the uh, explosive materials in particular because they take forever to cook. Uh, so basically, uh, my recommendation is start up some 40 mic mic, uh, start cooking some uh, components, and... Uh, that's pretty much it, because we are going to have some fun with those tanks tomorrow. The other gunboats. I've got uh, I've got one super cheeky little op that I'm going to uh, uh, see if we can pull off. If not that one, we're going to do some stuff with tanks. Cool, man. Sounds great. I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, get some sleep, though, would you? You got to be rested up. It's five in the goddamn morning. I am well aware the sun is coming up when my bearded dragon is clearing. I'll be angrily. My my coffee is delicious and my day has just started. That's where you're at right now. <laughs> I will probably wake up at lunch. I will see you then. All right, later, man. Later. All right, now that that's taken care of. Uh, OPSEC, as I record our conversation. Uh, let's head to the north. We'll get on the road and head over to the... Um, sounds like I now know what I need to make. Uh, but we'll do we'll do a quick salvage run. Get get some B mats to the front lines. 
uh, BMATs to the front lines. And you're probably thinking, but what about ammunition? Check, you said BMATs were the, the base resource. That's what you need to make, you know, ammo and guns and stuff like that. Don't they need that more? Well, sometimes, but more often than not, one of the things that's always needed is the basic materials to the front because those crazy engineers who are building bunkers and barbed wire and foxholes and sandbags, they need basic materials, those BMATs, to build all that stuff. And since the front line has to hold, uh, and the foxholes like this one right here and that one right there, those two are foxholes. You see that big flag on it means that it's active. It means there's an AI in there. They will shoot people. Oh, I'm in the Sorry about that. I'm in the way. That was the voice comms, by the way. That was in voice comms. We're rolling up. Uh, here is a salvage yard. It is currently not active. Um, I've never used one of these, and there's nobody in it, so we're going to go ahead and use it. Armco has been around for just one week, and it's been for just this war. Yeah, I'm literally a salvager from Command and Conquer. I've been streaming, and we've been jamming to the CNC soundtrack, the Red Alert soundtrack. It's so good. It's so perfect for this. If you do end up playing Foxhole, like, yeah, go ham. There's a little one of those little lucky ones. Let's go ahead and grab that. Um, are we full? No. Now, I wonder, can we... Do I have to do this, like, manually, or can I just... Oh, it looks like I have to do it manually. We didn't have this technology yesterday, or last time I played. So, quite cool. So let me pop out. Let's see how much we've gathered so far. Uh, we can get a bit more of that. It looks like I'm going to have to manually move it now. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to manually move it. Not a big deal. Can do. Just fill my inventory. Get over here. Get to this inventory. Shift, click. Easy enough to load and unload. I absolutely love this. So when you don't have uh, a sweet harvester vehicle unlocked which you won't at the beginning of a war if you decide to join it in a later war like we did like right at the beginning of one and you gotta equip your hammer you bust that sucker out and then you smack stuff and that's how we mine very old school mmo like yikes this is why this bit of tech when whoever said you know what we need to do harvesters right away um those people smart people <laughs> always go for the harvester tech uh, this is amazing. What I love about this, too, is there's so many, like, roles that you can play where you're just helping your faction and that people really dive in and do it. Um, like Yavrik back there, who is just doing logistic stuff, getting ready for tank stuff, because it's going to be fun times and that we're going to need it for the war. He was talking about the warden weekends. Um, I guess the big warden pushes always seem to happen on the weekends, which I guess isn't that big of a surprise. Uh, it's a little weird to me that it's a warden thing uh, and not like a colonial thing. The way that I've always heard the factions described, and it might be a bit bullshit, is that the wardens are the uh, these, these like well-organized, try-hard groups, and the colonials are a bit less so. Um, they're a bit more like ad hoc, more in it for the... I don't want to say the fun of it, because honestly, try hard and being organized is very much a fun thing to do. Um, but it different, different like style, right? I wouldn't put too much, too much faith into that. They're probably just about the same. Um, though I will say the wardens, and hopefully you guys get to see some of their technology today in this little demo video, uh, have much more of like, uh, like I said, the, the colonials have a very like World War II American vibe to them right or allied vibe to them the wardens have a very like german engineering vibe to them and you'll see it in their vehicles particularly they have some sweet tanks and right on to the developers they actually made them statistically different they play differently uh uh, da, 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 just the salvage and stuff. And notice I am burning diesel running this thing. Not a big deal. Easy enough to refuel. Um, there is an entire group uh, that they'll have, they'll have signs near, like, the uh, the diesel fields in various places. It'll be like, if this thing runs out of fuel, then message so-and-so on Discord to get it refueled. And I find that awesome and hilarious that there are groups of people that are like, hey, this is my only job. Let's go ahead and equip my... Um, my radio i got my gas mask but i don't need to equip my new filter yet uh, but okay we're loaded up we've got our first load by the way this is a uh, forward operating base um 
it's not on a forward base. I don't know why there is one right here. I'm sure there's a reason somebody decided to put one here. Uh, but this is what you would put near the front line and upgrade it to have a spawn point. I can click this. Um, actually, I'm too close to my truck. If I go over here, use encampment, um, you can see there's actually stuff in here, including uh, there can be soldier supplies turning this into a spawn point. And what you do is you run up to one of these and you hit assign spawn point. Any place they can op operate is a forward operating base. Um, basically, where everyone's spawning for the front line, you can set your spawn to it. And that's why it's such an important key key to the you know the front that's what you want to kill is wherever the uh, the enemy is spawning from and where they're keeping their supplies and you're obviously gonna want to defend all that if you're an engineer or uh infantryman we've run multiple convoys and it's something awesome to see you know 10 supply trucks running around uh working together getting stuff done okay okay let's get out of the road oh that's our new tank Try to make a space for you. Huh. Neat. I haven't seen that yet. And Austin powers this turn here. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh, no. What have I done? Mistakes have been made. And we're out. There we go. Bridges are destroyable. And I'm sure you will see that. If we end up going to a, bre a beach front line or a, a bridge front line. Uh, to the refinery. Which should be up here. But if I remember right, traffic is supposed to go. Yeah, one way. They come down this way. There's a sign that actually lets you know. And we're going to go up and around this way. There's somebody at the refinery right now. No big deal. Just got to squeeze in somewhere. Get close enough to use it. Now, there is a sweet spot right here in the corner. There we go. In the bottom left-hand corner, it says use refinery. We hit E. And I will do this later. We were talking about the explosive material. Uh, that's what he was talking about. And it does take a while. Like, if I put this in here. Uh, that's not what I wanted. If I put this in here, um, you'll see five minutes. That's only a stack of 100. So if I put all of this in there, it'd probably be about 45 minutes. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to dump it all into... I shift click all into basic materials and this will be done in five minutes and it'll be ready for the front line so at this point we'll do a little uh, little edit I'll get out of the way so everybody else can use this without me being here we'll come back we'll load up and then we'll move out all right we're just wrapping up our last bit of basic materials uh, we've almost got a full bit and I took some out of the retrieve stockpile we've got a location friendly forces have managed to take a one of the smaller villages outside of i think it's like the deadlands is where we're gonna head we may change our mind on the way up uh there's been partisan activity on the roads so i may have to make a few adjustments but we're gonna head up that way and bring the supplies to an area that we've recently taken so the engineers are very busy right now building up we're all full let's get going i also got a full tank of gas and i did decide to take one diesel can with me just so we can reload as we go and what i didn't do let me double check something real quick. Uh, let's just see. How's that diesel can look? Yeah, we're good. I have made the mistake of grabbing a diesel can out of inventories and not checking to see if there was actually diesel in the can. So it had like five on it. And when we started this campaign, the areas to the north of us, actually in this hex, and I'll open the map again in a second, but uh, in this hex were frozen. The weather in the newest, I guess, update, the big exp like expansioning update, uh, made weather effects really matter. And so we were in these brutally cold conditions at the beginning of the war, right? I think Stalingrad. There's actually a place called Sultangrad, is what everyone calls it. It's incredibly hard to take, and it was deep in the winter. Uh, Armco was there fighting, trying to take it. We didn't manage to take it, but we did take out the two factories that were in the city, so we called that a, a pseudo-victory. We'll take it. Uh, and then had to fall back that night. It was it was an epic struggle back and forth. The guys did a great job. Anyways, um, that weather effect, though, means that you can freeze to death, and you freeze relatively quick. I'll try to put some footage of that in here. Um, but you also, your vehicles would freeze. You could use open-top vehicles. You could even sit on the gun, the machine gun, of our logistics truck that has a gun on the top without freezing to death uh, if you weren't careful. You had to dive in, you know, into the inside of the vehicle. 
but those seasons changed and we were kind of bitching and complaining a lot about this 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 hardcore weather effect where even your vehicles could freeze up and that you'd have to put a fire next to them to thaw out the diesel engines uh which is kind of a really cool concept but that being said uh let me just double check my map real quick make sure i'm going the right way uh looks like we need to go north and then take a left and then just stay on the road heading north out of town all right we're good we're good we're driving uh we still got a long ways so there there's this cool like there, there's a there's an element of keeping things fresh during the war and not just between wars and the way they do it is one the new season system when rivers freeze over it means suddenly you've got crazy cool ways to flank the enemy which we use to great advantage at the beginning of the war you've also got the technology system as we were gathering resources sometimes you get uh, rarer bits of, of particular metals that can be used for the game's research system group like group wide basically you choose what prototypes to work on and you'll get an early version of that tech if you get enough of these resources but you also push technology towards that direction now for our faction they actually work together and try to figure out you know what are we going for what are we pushing for uh which i find pretty cool it's like a quartermaster or something I, it's a community thing i don't know the details yet like i said we're only about eight days into this um oh, some random truck on the side of the road let's go ahead and cross still very cool so as you're playing as you're fighting like this morning i woke up i've just seen a tank i've never seen before and that's happened every day I've logged in. There's a new piece of gear that changes how the war is fought. You know, today you get mortars. Uh, today you get smoke or, or, or gas grenades. Uh, we had gas grenades before we had gas masks. <laughs> and you can imagine how well that went over. Uh, for both sides. Both sides had gas grenades before either one of us had gas masks. Gas masks were a very welcome technology. Uh, pretty hilarious. I love the lighting too. It's the, the the graphics are simple enough, but everything has that kind of worn in look. It 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 works for what you've got. It may seem simplistic, just kind of taking a glance at it, but also keep in mind what is portrayed on screen. Right now, we're passing a lot of structures, bases, uh, and bunkers that have been built by players. All of this has been built and set up by different factions, by different um, regiments in the game. Just like Armco, we've got our own supply base. Um, which I've shown on stream, but we're not going to show here. Uh, that that is there for us to grab gear and equipment and and ammo and whatever we need, and to have a rally point, depending on what the operation is going to be. Uh, and members of the community have stepped up to take over. You saw Yavrik there; he's he stood he stood up and and really helped uh, us run this. As myself and Wasted Space, we love to play. We're brand new to the game. He's got years. You know, he's got tons of experience playing. Up, um, oh, we're going to get slowed down here because these bridges suck. Eh, go. It's been fun over the last week to watch these bases kind of build up and, and go from, like, crappy wooden structures, basically pits in the ground, to full-on, like, concrete bases. All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to go this way. Yeah, we're going to go this way and then cross through the... Uh... Got some armor rolling out. Um, I might be able to pass this guy. That armor's not that fast. And then we're going to go this route. supply convoy i'm guessing probably heading the same direction i am but he's trying to keep up with the tank oh, i'm gonna just press on through i'm just driving with uh, w and a and just holding holding w down to go forward and adjusting my course as we go i can't rotate the camera uh, the camera is a weird one and it takes a little bit of getting used to because you can look a little bit farther on your screen by putting your mouse to the edge of it right uh, with binoculars, you saw me looking a lot farther than that. With a rifle, you can get a little bit farther out. With some vehicles, you can get a little bit farther out. Um, I need to pull over here for a second. Now, there is a mini-map at the bottom left-hand corner. I've probably covered that up, so I'm not giving away too much information. And right now, I'm probably showing you guys footage of something that isn't this, because I'm looking at my tactical map at the moment, um, to figure out where these resources need to get dropped off. Uh... I need to take a right and drop these off, and then we'll see what the front's looking like. The engineers need this equipment. They need these supplies. There's something really fun about being that supply truck that shows up, you know, just in the nick of time and brings the ammunition or this or the the 
the shirts, the soldier supplies, so that, that those troops can keep respawning and keep fighting. Because it doesn't matter how many rounds of ammunition, how many machine guns you've got, how many mortar rounds you've got in the base, uh, if you don't have the ability to spawn there. So, we'll take a look at what the front's looking like up here, and see where we can drop these off. See if we can find an engineer who's, who's working right now. This is the problem with going to a front that you've never been to. Is that I don't exactly know where these supplies are necessary. Okay, that's gunfire. Yo, got a pack of B-mats here. We need them. This is too close to the front line. <laughs> this is... Uh, we do have some armor here. I'm going to drop these supplies off because we do have armor here, so... Submit all to the stockpile. Uh, this looks like this is going poorly. And notice that I'm getting commends. So they all just saw, you know, Captain Shack has dropped uh, X amount of... Holy crap, what is happening up there? We're going to pull back, and we're going to get turned around, and we're going to park this. That right there, uh, that guy's carrying a body with him, a wounded soldier. Uh, either that's a wounded player. I didn't get a good look at it. That's either a wounded player that's heading to uh, get someplace safe. Man, we were... Real close to the front line. Um, get someplace safe. Let me unlock this just in case I die. We don't have to just leave it here. Um, and let me set my spawn point. We'll get to the front. Somebody's building a watchtower there so we can see where enemy resources are. There's a medical truck. Um, Someone medic. Medic. Yep. Calls for a medic. Let's go ahead and sign our spawn point. How are they doing on respawns here? They got 133. So we can Aww. die as a group 133 yeah. times. And... <laughs> So guys, let me illustrate because you guys aren't like willing to do this. You grab a gun, you fucking reload it, and then you go ahead and like clear the enemy. Thank you very much. Hey, this is how you fight. It's really that easy, but I don't know why you don't do that. Oh man, oh man. I'm gonna just double check my resources here. So we got two mags, we got a gas mask, there's no grenades up here. They need whoa. Somebody, 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 get out inside that one. Alright, coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. Thank you, man. Thank you, Dudek. And that was friendly fire. Going across here. These are all broken, so they've probably been shelled recently, or maybe a tank came running up here. We can dive into this. Oh my god. Now notice that my line is white. I think we're taking what? Mortar rounds probably? Now, those look like grenade explosions. No, I don't see anything. Oh. Some more ammo for us. These backpacks are dead troops. Looks like they've been fighting for a while now. It doesn't necessarily look like it's going well. There's a collie right there. Reloading. Managed to wound him. When you get hit, it actually slows you down. Oh, I see. They're taking out these. This is a, this is, used to be an enemy base. That's what's happening, and they're clearing it out. I'm just going to do a quick scout. See what we're running into. Got a couple of supply boxes here. What in the world? 40 millimeter rounds? Okay, we're going to grab these. This is going to make us really slow, and I hope we can make it back. But those are... We don't have a lot of supplies in this base. I'm going to bring these back. Yeah, they're trying to quickly get rid of these bunkers so we can get our own. Come on, come on, come on, come on. One of the roles that you can play on this, uh, and there's quite a few, you know, machine gunner, ammo carrier, grenadier. Um, it depends on what your kit is. Medic is really useful. Spotter for artillery. Uh, one of the things that I had a lot of fun with is running around with a... Um, uh, let's drop these off. And... Just gonna wait a second. Yeah, let somebody else submit it all. And another supply truck just arrived with rifles. Uh, 7.62 ammo. All kinds of fun stuff. And another truck just arrived with even more ammunition. I'm gonna grab a couple of these mammon grenades. Uh, at least just one. There's a mortar in here. There's some 30 millimeter in here. Uh, and yeah, you can go with anti, you know, material rifle, anti-vehicle rifle. Uh, but one of the one of the roles that I really enjoyed was running a jeep 
a non with no weapon on the back of it. Just a normal. Hang on, gotta kill a collie real quick. Uh, just a normal jeep. I can pick him up. Not going to though. <laughs> And, uh, oh shit, what are you shooting at? What do you see? And bringing supplies to the front front line, right? And soldiers that were respawning that the medics couldn't get to. That guy was wounded. He actually just gave up. Uh, but if you get wounded and you go down like that, you can be picked up and brought back to the medics and your, your bleed out timer actually stops. So it's a wonderful, like, saving those soldier supplies, saving the resources, and also just, you kind of get into it. I found people, uh... A role play. They get into it. They're like, oh man, I'm wounded. Get me back to the front line. Uh, they really. 12.7. Yeah, we must have recently taken this. There's a lot of random resources about. Uh, and I do not mind looting some resources, particularly. Like, what was this guy carrying? What were you rocking? One rifle, one bit of ammunition on 7.62. Oh, all right. I'll take that. I'll take that. I don't mind. Run it back. See if there's a squad already fighting. What I want to do is I want to keep this bunker safe so that the engineers have a chance to get stuff done. Uh, let's talk a little bit about building stuff. You know, why not? Eh, 40 millimeter. And we'll just submit all that to the, to the stockpile. And that'll be there for others that need it. And I'm going to go ahead and reload because we've been running into contact multiple times on this side. It is nighttime, so our perspective, our field of view, our fog of war has been restricted a bit more. Uh, even with binoculars, it basically just neuters binoculars. Like, I can't see a... This is really dangerous, but I can't see a damn thing now, right? Um, go ahead and switch back. Let's get up with the rest of the troops. Don't want to be fighting alone. Let's see what's going on over here. I do hear a vehicle. I'm going to equip this grenade that I've got. What's grenade? What kind of grenade is it? Is it anti-vehicle or anti-building? Oh, Holly. Holy shit. Almost hit my collie buddies. They must be low on supplies or something. I don't know why they're charging us with nothing but pistols. I think they might be trying to kill the, uh... I am actually bleeding out, so I need to be quick about this. Where's the... Where's the... Bandages, bandages, bandages. Panic. I didn't grab any bandages. I normally do. I was yapping and not thinking. I'm bleeding out. I'm bleeding out. So, if you're bleeding, you will go down. And a medic can get you back up. But I need another person to heal me now. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn my volume down a little bit. Um, medic! I actually used up all my ammo, too. So let's grab some 9 mil. Uh, da, 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 da. What I would give for a search option, like, seriously. Are we? Am I blind or am I, are we out? We've got pistol ammo, but we, we don't have any. And this is a supply problem. My, pit, my, my weapon is now totally useless. Um, I'm gonna have to take a 7.62 and drop my weapon. Um, yeah, because I don't see it in here. Nope. That's not good. That's not good. I mean, this rifle is fine, but I'm not nearly as good with it as I am with the SMG. I like to be, I like to be mobile. Oh, crap. He's bandaging, he's bandaging. Got my rifle out. I'm stuck in the barbed wire. This is what barbed wire does. Gotta be careful where you put it. Ah, oh, I'm not equipped for close range fighting and I did not grab a bayonet. Look out! One back here, and there's one back here. Do we have any grenades? Other than my single... I do have an HE grenade. Nah, gonna happen. It's not a good spot to be in. 
Another HE grenade. Well, I'll take it. Oh, so there's different types of grenades. This is, oh balls, trying to loot stuff and I picked up a body. <laughs> Grenade, and there's the gas. Remember how I said gas was a thing? I'm gonna die. Fine before I throw that in there. Ha ha, suckers. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> right away. These are anti-building grenades. They do damage to structures. They can kill infantry though, if you get lucky. And since I did loot that, I might as well use it instead of letting them have it. Uh, what kind of this is another anti-building grenade. So that's how close we are to the front line. Good to know. There's some ammunition on this dead guy. We'll go ahead and take that. Uh, we'll equip the grenade as well. How's our gas mask doing? 70 out of 100. We know they're over here. Uh, we need reinforcements, guys. I can't do this on my own. And there's nobody over here? Ah, we got a machine gunner. Okay. I don't know if he was trying to set up that bipod. Notice my field of view, by the way. See how he disappeared and then I lean out and you can see him. So it is definitely what you're able to see. Your position matters. And that's why they went with this top-down perspective. A lot of people bitch about, oh, the devs are lazy because they didn't do this is first person or third person. Uh, no, it was a conscious choice to make it focused on not the player's skill and how well they can snap a mouse, but about positioning, equipment, logistics. All right, we're going to try to, we're going to be brave. We're going to be brave. Grenade out. He's gonna dive out. Now we gotta switch rifle. Switch the rifle. Switch the rifle. Oh, damn. I hit the wrong button at first. Oh, 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 those rifle garrisons are firing at us. That's the, um. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I thought I got away, but I think he actually, that was a player. Yeah. Um, so I'm bleeding out now. Medic! Medic! So you can imagine, it's six in the morning. I don't have the Armco squad, and I wanted to run with, you know, a couple of randos. But if you can imagine getting your squad together. So I'll put in a little bit of footage now of some of the battles that I've had with the squad, some of the bigger ones, and you guys can see what this is like. Oh, medic! It's not gonna get to me. Three seconds. Two. One. I'm dead. He almost got to me, though. He almost got to me. Oh, ah. Sometimes the camera bugs out and it lets you look around. I wish there was a spectator cam in this. See the two machine gunners holding them off while the engineers on the right hand side build the structure that used to be, I'm fairly certain that used to be an enemy base. Uh, Seth, do we have a problem? <laughs> Your mother. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, online games. I probably muted that. Uh, alright. So, go ahead and respawn. I'll spawn back at the base. You should be. More troops are showing up. I don't think so. There was an ATH. What the heck is the idiot doing? This is fucking stupid fire. Yeah, now, now we have an ASG. Now we need people with ammo to shoot the ASG guys. Alright, let's go grab our truck and go ahead and get out of here and get them some more much needed resources. And this is where I think I'm going to end it. So here's some footage of some of the, the battles that we've been in, some fun moments that we've had. Um, if you have questions, if you want to see more of Foxhole on the channel, maybe detailed guides, uh, because I'm just playing it anyways. Um, or you want to see, you know, my, my perspective of it as the war continues. Excuse me, guys. Then let me know. Oh, there's no good way to go around this way, is there? Ugh. They've blocked the road. Then let me know in the comments below. I look forward to reading your comments and your thoughts on it. Take care, and I'll see you next time.